Hello, and welcome to the North Coast Journal Preview, where we take a look at the stories being covered in the current edition of the North Coast Journal. I'm your host, Dave Frank, and I'm joined this week by Jennifer Famico Cahill, Arts and Features Editor at the North Coast Journal. Welcome, Jen. Hello, Dave. It's just me today. Just Jen. Sounds like You're so brave. You're so brave. <laughs> no, this is fun because it is Thanksgiving week when we're recording this, and yes. there's a lot of holiday festive uh, cheer in the air, and that's hopefully going to carry over to our conversation today. Yes, we are recording this on Wednesday, and I am already starting on appetizers in my mind. Um, but, uh, of course, Thanksgiving week every year is when the journal does its annual gift guide, which Very means... Cool. If you look on the cover, uh, Dave Brown from our art department has made yet another Christmas scene, this time with an immense pile of presents, and um, none of them are for me. I'm very sad. Um, but, <laughs> Not yet. But um, I don't know. Did you get a chance to look at our crazy gift guide? Which I should say, it's not an editorial product. Like, we don't go through and pick this. When it comes back from sales and marketing, um, that's when we see it, and you know, the only reason I'm even, you know, talking about it today is because people kind of love it. They like yeah. write to me and say, are you guys doing gift guide this year? When is it? Shouldn't it have been out by now? People are like, and then they really do flip through it. And I think it's kind of cool because it's, it's all local businesses. So Very cool. um, yeah, I like that about it. So I did flip through it. And one of the things I like the best is that there's something I would suspect there's something in there for everybody. There's like mm -hmm. this full range of things. So um, I'll just throw it out there and I'll let you kind of pick up. I'm not sure how you wanted to cover this exactly, <laughs> but but it goes it goes all the way from the things that are like distinctly humble, shall we say? Like, yeah, like really humble um, really all the humble. way up to like a hot tub. So so yes. you know, I don't have friends and family that are cool enough to get me a hot tub, but there are some things that look, you know, almost as cool. Listen, if somebody out there wants to support local journalism, there might, in fact, be enough room on the rooftop next to the journal offices. I don't know. Just say, let's go for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going from the enemy of the people to recipients of hot tubs. I don't think it's going to happen. Right. Um, but there are actually some very cool things that are like locally made ceramics. Yeah. Um, there are some very cool teapots and sculptures. Um, there are things done by local artists, like um, everything from like stained glass to, you know, books that are illustrated by local artists. Um, and it's kind of neat to see them all together. And, you know, it's a pretty layout and everything, but there are paintings. There's a lot of stuff that's very, you know, like decorative art or, you know, like I said, sculpture and things like that. But there is also a lot of craft. Um, so we have things like, you know, handmade jewelry. Um, there's a very cool, uh, kind of like a, I guess it's a buck knife or it's a, a knife with like an elk horn handle. Um, and some of those are, um, made, uh, by people who are part of local tribes around here. And then, um, there are some things like locally made hooch. Nobody's <laughs> ever mad when you show up with that. Um, one of my favorite, very humble things in here is, and I'm calling it a trend, there are not one, but two Sasquatch stuffies available. <laughs> and two banana slugs. <laughs> there are some banana slugs, Sasquatch stuffies. Yeah, I feel like those are very humble choices, right? Oh, yeah. So... Um, Mm -hmm. well, Guy, I, I know we weren't supposed to like talk about specifics, but I didn't know that Guy Fieri <laughs> had his own line of product. That, that's actually oh, yes. pretty cool. Oh, yes. The, um, if you have fans of Flavortown in your life, there's a lot of Guy Fieri merch in here. Um, cookbook sauces, etc. I'm sorry, we don't have the wigs. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know he wore a wig, but I, I could use one. <laughs> no, I don't think he does wear a wig. I've seen the hair up close, and that is his hair. <laughs> I'm just joking. But I have seen lots of people with like a hat, like a, a visor that has the Guy Fieri hair on top of it. I'm sorry that's not in here, but, you know, <laughs> if you find it somewhere, hook me up. Um, there are also some things that are very, like, weird, and that's the kind of only in Humboldt thing. Like, oh, I do want to say that mushrooms are another trend. Oh, 
Okay. Right? Do you remember like when everything was llamas and then for a while everything yeah. was pineapples? I feel like mushrooms are having their moment. Interesting. Yes. Little mushroom ornaments, mushroom jewelry, mushroom sculptures. Everything's coming up fungi. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there are some like quirky things like there's um, bespoke handmade underwear. Really? Yes. Bespoke, I tell you. Um, That's legit. Yes. And if you are a person who is no longer, you're past the age in your life where you are making a pipe out of an apple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> or a beer be, can. Not protestive too much. Yeah. Um, there is, you know, there are always kind of like, you know, what we call functional glass, right? There's lots of like glass pipes that are for sale everywhere all over humble and we had a few last year too but this year there's one that looks i swear to god like sherlock holmes's pipe <laughs> i hope you don't have any three pipe problems <laughs> um but yeah it's a fun it's always fun to look through it um it's always fun to um go through the office and just sort of say to each other like so if this showed up <laughs> oh that's how that works they kind of just well, show up and like no, they don't. They don't uh, show it for us. But you know, we sort cool. of joke about like, you know, feel free to get me this or my God, never get me that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if somebody wanted to get us the hot tub, we would accept that. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. What, you, what do you want, Dave? Um, <laughs> I, I kind of I kind of think that some of the artwork is cool. And I would like yeah. to if it were up to me. I would give away some of the jewelry. I'm not a jewelry person, but I think mm -hmm. people like to receive jewelry. I'm going to get you those um, aqua roller skates. That's my plan for you. So I roller skated like twice in about seventh grade. See what I mean? It's going to change your life. Yeah, that would break me. <laughs> There's a cool blanket, actually. That blanket looks pretty, I almost cursed. It looks really cool. <laughs> a blanket that makes you curse. Yeah. I mean, you got to get it Because it's now. that cool. I have to say it is that cool. But it is kind of fun. Like I said, um, you know, I've, I've had those holidays like you know where you're buying stuff for people and you're online and sort of trudging through choices and your neck hurts and it's just just miserable you know and as yeah. as much as i don't love schlepping around hunting you know um i feel like when you are shopping locally you are making connections with people you are talking to people you are you know sometimes you know the shop owners that's always mm -hmm. cool um, this is how you get to know the shop owners. And it's a way to keep money in our community. Totally. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos is going to space again, probably without your help. Right. He does not need it. Um, True yeah. enough. Yeah. And actually, that's a good pitch. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Please. I, I thought you were done. I was saying it's a good pitch because there are things that we can get here that some people just out of like default or habit might just say, well, I'm going to order it online because maybe because it costs a tiny bit more. Now, granted, if yeah. something costs a ton more, then then I get it. If it's double, like, don't do that. But but, but it's even worthy if, to invest in the community. Exactly. It's worth and reminding even, people. Even if you don't see it in front of you, if there's something that you want, a lot of times our local, you know, shop owners are going to be able to order whatever it is for you. And then, I don't know, I'd just rather be putting the percent of profit into a local shop rather than Jeff Bezos. Yeah, like herbal tea. Did you need to order your herbal tea from the warehouse down in Santa Rosa? No, it's down the street. Is plenty of herbal tea. We got plenty of, of wonderful local products here. And it's also kind of like, it's a way to invest in the longevity of having things available. Some, I guarantee you, whatever you buy locally, somebody is paying to have shipped to them somewhere else in the country. So enjoy it. Enjoy all the wonderful things we have here. Truth. Well, cool. Thanks for going over the guide a little bit. I, I'm sure there's so much more, but. Yes. And by the way, I just want to segue because I did say mushrooms were having a moment. Yeah. Mushrooms are having a moment. <laughs> Legit. Um, recently, yes. Recently they had like, you know, I don't know. What's the mushroom equivalent of the Oscars? Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the mycological, uh, Humboldt County Mycological Society mycology being the study of mushrooms, fungi, spores, all those things. Um, <laughs> oh, no. They had a, um, a festival. You may have noticed the every year the mushroom fair happens. And I have actually never gone, but 
the intrepid Mark Larson went this year and nice. took a zillion pictures. You can go to northcoastjournal.com and find the story. It's titled Mushroom Mania. And um, he's got these really great pictures of the Mushroom Festival and all the displays. And God love them. People in mushroom costumes. <laughs> People are into it. Yes. And like there was this one woman who was just kind of wearing beige until you looked up at her head. And she had a sofa cushion sized mushroom cap on her head. Oh my goodness, big hats. I love it. There were a lot of mushroom hats. Um, so yeah, if you've got mushroom clothes, another thing, you need to take, you need to go to the mushroom fair, um, show them off, flex on all those mycologists. Um, but he did a, a great couple of interviews with folks who were working the fair. And probably the most um, well-used part of the Mycological Society's offerings there because they've got books, they've got um, lectures, they've got all this stuff, but they also have mushroom identification. So you pluck whatever it is you've been wondering about in your yard carefully, don't lick it, and then you bring it to them and they will ID your mushroom. Because even if, you know, we can pretty much guesstimate by, you know, going online and looking at pictures and things like that, but you are taking your life in your hands. Yeah. So it's good to talk to somebody who knows this stuff. And it's also kind of cool to be to be sure and to find out um, maybe some facts you wouldn't have known, uh, especially about local varieties. And we have like a jillion local varieties. Um, according to Mark's wonderful story, um, let's see, it's like, I'm looking for the number here, um, 470 uh species i think we've got um this year they got people brought in and showed or identified um let's see 300 oh, the least yes 300 they've had the the least they've had is 186 the most they've had was 470 with a mean of 302 the mycologists are very mathematical <laughs> um we have hundreds and hundreds of kinds of mushrooms. And one of the cool things about it that Mark learned was that they kind of go, dare I say, underground for a while. Oh, no. So you might see, um, you know, there's this 470, let's say, on the biggest year. But maybe a big percentage of those mushrooms won't show up the following year, uh, won't be found, won't be recorded. Uh, they kind of come and go. And they are dormant for kind of random lengths of time. And that's something that I guess is an area for more study. Um, so when you find the little odd mushroom, it could be something that people get really excited about. And one of my favorite things in the world is nerds getting worked up. So you should absolutely <laughs> do it. Mycological um, mayhem? Yes, mycological mayhem. That's what I'm looking for. Um, speaking of the mayhem, um, and it, you know, there's like glow in the dark mushrooms. There's cool mushrooms. Um, there is also bad news on the mushroom front. Um, the uh, guy who runs the um, toxic mushroom table every year, um, whose last name is Kessler, he's, uh, is it Russell Kessler? Bruce Kessler, pardon me. Bruce Kessler uh, comes back every year and he has been since they started having these and he's a medical doctor. And he will not only tell you which mushrooms are poisonous, but what will happen to you if you eat them. Oh my goodness. Right? Scare me straight, Bruce Kessler. Mm. Um, so he has the unfortunate news. He said every year before he's been able to say to people, ah, don't worry, at least we don't have the death cap mushroom. Oh, geez. And the death cap mushroom um, is Amanita phalloides. I, I don't know how to say this. Sounded it's right. very Latin. It's in italics. But anyway, um, previously we haven't had it. But in 2021, it showed up. Somebody found some in, uh, I believe it was Shelter Cove. And now most recently they've been found in Eureka. They're around. So when you're walking the dog or picking something for supper, be really careful. Because now we do have to be careful about a mushroom that will straight kill you. Damn. Um you want to know what it looks like? Show up at the mushroom fair next year. <laughs> um, but they they have all kinds of grim little warnings. I don't know if you got a, a chance to see them. 
No, but but so what was interesting, I was going to say is when I first moved here, one of the people I met asked me, hey, do you want to go pick mushrooms? And, mm-hmm. I, and I, I was like, uh, I don't know. And I ended up not going with him. But it turns out that this person and apparently his family for at least a generation or two before him, they go out and pick every year. And they sell them to different restaurants and stuff. And just depending yeah. on the time of year, they're able to make decent money. I mean, there's a lot that grows here. But one of the things that he said, which I saw in the article, which I think is worth repeating. I hope I didn't steal your thunder. No, um, do. It, it's, a, it's a famous quote, apparently, that like, you know, I'm paraphrasing. Or he paraphrased when he told me. But, uh, but it, all mushrooms are edible. It's just that some are only edible once. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, are you going to come back from it? It's kind of like all right. animals being pettable, but sometimes not more than once. Right. Um, like your fingers. Yeah. So I, I think it's probably like people who are legit experienced mushroom hunters can do really well in Humboldt. We have so many. It's such a rich environment. And I frequently see people, you know, people that I know, and there's an entire uh, Facebook group about mushroom hunting posting gorgeous mushrooms that I shudder to think what they would cost. And we actually had a local boom here, I think over the summer, where people had, you know, thousands of dollars worth of mushrooms um, that they found. Sometimes the weather, the timing, everything just leads to an explosion of of edible mushrooms. Um, But again, it is for the cautious. There's a wonderful quote at the end of it. Yeah. and it is, uh, there are old mushroom hunters and bold mushroom hunters, but no old, <laughs> bold mushroom hunters. That says it all, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you, mushrooms are having a moment, and if you would like to continue having moments with mushrooms, be really, really careful. Um, but again, I urge you to go online and look at the pictures because it's kind of amazing, the variety that we have in Humboldt County. Oh, yeah. And delicious too. Like, um, I guess I shouldn't name any particular restaurants or chefs, but they're they're here, and people make some amazing things here with mushrooms. Yeah, and it's it's beautiful. If you go, you know, if you go on the Mushroom Hunters uh, Facebook page, you'll see people who are just doing incredible things at home too. Um, it's just kind of a lovely, sustainable, um, you know, food sovereignty practice. Um, mm-hmm. There are some places, though, where you cannot pick, and it's important to know, especially if you are on uh, parks land, um, you really want to be careful about where you are and are not allowed to pick mushrooms. Some of that will have to do with keeping an area pristine. Some of it may have to do with things like pesticides and stuff like that, Um, not necessarily on parks land, but elsewhere. Um, So, you know, you want to know where your foraging is safe, because on top of the mushrooms being safe to eat, where are they safe to pick? Kind of like blackberry season, right? You don't yeah. want to be, yeah. Um, not, to get, not to get all tree hugger-ish, but just one last pitch for mushrooms. Um, <laughs> I think it was on Keat that I saw this documentary fairly recently. And they, as they do more and more research into my, you know, the, how the mushrooms kind of, how they're all interconnected mm-hmm. under the forest floor, they interact with the trees in this web of life to the point where like trees actually communicate with each other through the underground mushroom connections. Or that's not just here, it's like around the world. So it's worth exploring and looking into. There's some really, really interesting, I guess, I don't know, innovation, or at least they're doing a better job of communicating it to lay people through through uh, the um, you know documentary films. It's both fascinating and creepy. Yeah, it's like, what's the movie? Um, uh, Avatar, there's a little Avatar <laughs> nature to this all. I'm just concerned. What are the mushrooms? Are the mushrooms talking about me? Um, Yeah, it's alarming. Um, So yes, that's where we are. Mushroom moment. Um, Be careful where you pick. (laughs) What else is going on on the Arch and Features beat this week? We have some great stuff. Um, John Bennett has a great uh, triple movie review, including She Said, Tar, and... um, Oh, what was the last one? Oh my God, I'm blanking. Um, but he has a great uh, triple. Oh, the menu. Speaking of mushrooms. Yeah. Um, well, and there, he kind of ties them together, all to do with kind of the corruption of power, and it's it's fascinating. Um, and then we also have some really great stories about, for example, dam removal. Uh, Fed has a piece on the Klamath dam removal stuff and where we are with that. Um, things are looking up on that front. Awesome. Um, and because I can't be 
serious for five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I have a seriously column this week, which awesome. again, I feel like I should say is not real. Please do not go. <laughs> um, it is new Starbucks holiday drinks. They are not real. Please do not go to Starbucks and, you know, attack people because of, do not go and ask for the Thanksgiving dinner flavored, um, Americano, um, also, don't even want that. Yeah. No barista were harmed in this satire. No baristas were harmed, and I need them to not be harmed in the future yeah. for anything that I've said. I always think it's very obvious that these things are fake, but occasionally, um, I did one on a medieval, uh, a sort of medieval wellness brand that was touting leeches and you know lead-based makeup and and things oh, like God. that, um, and. Somebody sent me a message asking, you didn't include when the group meets or any contact information. Can you get back to me with that? And I was like, I'm worried about you. I'm <laughs> I <don't know> <laughs> like, we should check in on you. Um, but yeah, so we came up with some things like, um, you know, particularly for the holidays, the Starbucks folks have really kind of gone to the well a lot of times with the beloved pumpkin spice latte and other things. And so are they running out of flavors? Do they have to make <laughs> up some new ones? Maybe. The last and so, few and you'll get them. Yeah. And so, for example, like, do you want a latte that tastes like falling leaves? <laughs> Maybe not. No. Maybe not. But Dave, I, I didn't want to call you out on this. Oh. But, ah, wait, I guess I did. You hate the pumpkin spice latte. I, You're I, a I, hater. I, so... I try not to hate anything or anyone <laughs> like liver and beets is the list. And I've actually started eating beets. So it's really just liver that I hate. But then you reminded me the pumpkin spice this time of year, the pumpkin <laughs> spice spice smell. And, and it just it just starts to get to me to the point where if I like taste it, if someone's like, oh, this is a really I have a cookie. And I'm just like, oh, you kind of ruined it for me. Like <laughs> like and, and latte, like I'd love a coffee. Like, let's kick it almost any coffee. But unfortunately and i feel bad almost because like you told me you're you're down like you like it oh yeah as soon as i that, will i will yeah. drink that all day long i it's like I liver love, to me it's like eat some liver I, I will i love you know a little tiny black espresso at an italian restaurant love it to death but i also love all those crazy drinks that are basically melted or partially melted ice cream mm. um all, if there's something that's like an apple creme brulee, I have no idea what it is. It, it's bigger than my head. I will absolutely try it. Um, in fact, it is a ritual for um, Kali Koziris, our calendar editor, is a girl who loves fall. She gets very deep. Around maybe like August, she starts saying she's ready for fall. She's done with heat. So once fall comes, once pumpkin spice latte season comes, we go to a cafe. It doesn't we typically don't go to Starbucks, but we go and we get whatever frou frou autumn drink they have, and we just fall girl it up. So it it's to me it's almost like pumpkin versus apple pie. Like I love apple pie so much that no matter how good your pumpkin pie is, I'm not a big fan. And I think that happened to me because I grew up by a cider mill. So like I've had apple cider, cinnamon cider, like all the amazing um, apple stuff. And then so pumpkin is like second class citizen almost. And I hate <gasps> to, yeah, like I just, it's just, it's just that one tier underneath. I'm sorry. Pumpkin gang. I know. Hey, we are turning sorry. on this man. I'm sorry. I, well, it's, I hope it's you so have not a, PC. I hope you have an apple option at Thanksgiving. Oh, totally. And the next time I see you, I'm going to have a big steamy, stinky pumpkin, no. pumpkin spice latte with me. And you're going to put it under my nose and make me smell it. I will, um, because that's our relationship. But anyway, <laughs> yes, so these are all fake. Please don't go and complain. Um, there isn't actually a satanic coffee available at Starbucks, so everybody relax. But the barista Todd dressed, dressed up like the nativity, that one cracks me up. Like, you want to do Christmas? Let's do Christmas. Go ask for Todd. Yeah, like I think that's hysterical. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, Jen, I'm sorry. That's all the time we have. This was really fun this week. I appreciate you in a big way. Good to see you too, Dave. North Coast Journal is available on newsstands now. Pick one up. Stay informed. Also available 24-7 online, so you can check them out anytime. 
Thanks, everybody out there for listening. Thanks again, Jen, for joining. Thanks to the engineer, Matt. We appreciate you in a big way. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And take care. Until next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>